offer an autism friendly summer camp. Um, I actually worked for the city of East Orange and ran the autism program for them. And I got to tell you, it trickled over to Newark because Newark didn't hire me to run their program. They partnered with Nason's Place so that I could run the whole program. So we're getting ready to celebrate three years um, in the city of Newark, partnering with them, oh. providing an autism summer camp. And East Orange continues to also be a part of yes. doing that as well. Um, but it's important for us to try to get each municipality to offer camps for children on the autism spectrum because they offer for atypical, they need to make sure that they offer it for um, children on the spectrum. And East Orange and Newark has definitely followed the lead and I, I hope that other municipalities would do it same, the same okay. because unfortunately the rate of autism continues to rise in the state of New Jersey. And that's gonna be my next question. I'm great that uh, SS Camp Newark and East Orange as well is doing great things. But as you, when, we late, when we relate to the percentage of how many children have autism in the state of New Jersey, is there one specific county that is higher than others? And if so, maybe the reason why? There's, you know, it's interesting because people always say, well, which community has the highest rate of autism? I can only speak to what I'm actually yes. living and seeing every day. Newark is probably the highest population that we serve. The okay. number of families that we serve, the highest is in the city of Newark. East Orange is right behind them. And then Irvington and Orange and any surrounding areas. Um, there's no known reason why the numbers are, are, are so high and varied. I mean, first of all, let's just say this. Newark is the largest city in the state of New Jersey. So that makes so sense. Yeah. It makes sense for yes. them to have more numbers. Um, and um, I think, you know, until they can find out why this is happening and no one seems to know why, um, we just have to continue to try to get the services and resources. And, you know, um, Mayor Baraka said it best, you know, um, we got to help organizations like Nason's Place who's helping us do the work to service the families in our community. Mm -hmm. And it's important that um, we help these families because the numbers continue to rise. Since 2004, the number has tripled amongst black and brown children especially in those in those underserved inner city communities. So more support is needed, more help is needed. And, you know, my goal one day is for Nason's Place to be a blueprint for other urban inner cities to follow so that they can get those sea resources in their community. Because when I get to see the faces of these amazing children that come out to our programs and services, that's the highlight for me. You know, yes. we do fundraisers throughout the year, you know, the galas, the night of excellence that we held the other night hosted by the mayor of Newark. That's a means to an end. That's a means to get these families what they need. The biggest joy for me is when I'm at the spring dance with these kids and they're getting to dance and have fun or the holiday celebrations or our basketball camps. I get my biggest joy watching these children. And I think, oh my God, I'm so grateful to the community, to the private and public sectors, because we couldn't do the work we do without the support of them. Right, and, um, and I'm thankful that people are donating and you have the community come together and you have philanthrop philanthropists. And, but in addition to that, you do have a grant that you did recently received. And I'd like to learn more about that. I know it's for 750000 mm -hmm. And our Congressman Donald Payne has something to do with that. Oh, yes. Listen, Congressman Donald Payne Jr. is an amazing man. Let me just say this. As I mentioned, he came to our, our first Sensory Friendly Skate Day almost eight, nine years ago. <clears throat> so he's known that I've been out here doing the work. Yes. And I would see him <coughs> at certain <coughs> functions. And he was like, oh, you're still at it. Yeah, I'm still at it. And I think he saw the determination. He saw that I was relentless. I wasn't just a parent who started something and was just gonna end it. And trust me, there's days where I wanted to, cause it was a lot. It's a lot actually begging for money, right? When you have a nonprofit in yes. urban inner city, it was overwhelming at times, it was, it, was, it was challenging. And I sacrificed a lot to do the work that I do. And you know, what I've learned is in order for people to really wanna help you, you have to do the work. You have to do the work. And I think Congressman Payne saw the work. He saw everything that Nason's Place was doing. He saw the impact that we had on the community, not just helping the families that we serve, but educating the community. And when we got the opportunity to have a building gifted to us yes, by Newark Mayor Ross J. Baraka and the city of Newark, um, 
that was huge. And then Congressman Payne saw that, you know, the mayor recognized the work that we're doing, but he saw firsthand himself. And through his efforts in Congress, we were able to get a $750,000 grant that we're going to utilize towards the building and structure of the building that we are going to build. Initially, when we were going to build that center, we were going to do a two-story center. Okay. But then COVID happened. We couldn't raise any funding. We couldn't do a lot of things like the world shut down, literally. I didn't think we were going to survive COVID, but through the grace of God, we did. But what I also realized that we had a situation in our community, which was homelessness. And it not only occurred with just atypical families, it was occurring with families with children with autism. And sometimes it's even harder for our families to find the right space for our kids because of some of the behaviors and the challenges and people may not understand or don't want them in their homes. So through um, this building, it's a mixed use opportunity, it's in the business zone. We're not only gonna build a center there now, we're also gonna look to build housing and a certain percentage of that housing we wanna designate to autism families. And that location is going to be in Newark? It's going to be in Newark. It's going to be uh, right on Clinton Avenue. Oh. I'm super excited because on April 30th, we're actually doing a walk here in the city of Newark. We're going to be walking from City Hall, who gifted us that building yes. where Newark Rio Ross Baraka office is and the Municipal Council. We're going to walk from City Hall to 132-134 Clinton Avenue, which will be the future site and home of Nason's Place Community Center for Autism. I am so happy for you all. I remember reading about it a long time ago and, and for it now to come full circle that you actually have the grant, you're actually expanding to what the idea initially was going to be and to for families to now be able to utilize all the services you have in one place is going to be excellent. We talked about respite care and how important it is real quick for a caregiver who's taking care of their children and different things they may need. And you talked about a camp that's coming up soon. And at that camp, what are they going to be doing and how does that, does that benefit the caregiver? Oh, wow. Yeah. That, that right there, I think, is for me, it's more for the parents. Yes. I, 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 I call it a twofer. Okay. And the twofer is that the children actually get an opportunity to come into an area they're not used to coming into, to hang out with their peers and not be in school, but yes. to get a chance to enjoy the um, great outdoors. We're actually going to Camp Linwood McDonald's, which is ran by the YMCA. And that's how I got that opportunity through the YMCA and meeting Rynice, um Bruce. Um, she's a Norker and yes. uh, she told me about it. One day I'm in the supermarket and her and I are chatting during the midst of COVID. And she's like, oh, we're going to go up to this cabin. I said, what cabin? We started talking more and more. And I, got, I, I tell her I appreciate her so much in that conversation that day because this is our fourth year going up to the cabin. In the midst of COVID, September of 2020, they signed place and embarked on a journey and took 25 kids up to that cabin. Thank God, knock on wood, not one COVID-related case. But what that weekend did for those parents was priceless. There's no way that you could have given them anything but that. And it was important because no one was taking our children. The children couldn't get their therapies anymore. They couldn't go to school. So now they're home 24 seven. And I think a lot of the parents were, were, were going through their own mental meltdowns because we do need a break. I mean, our children, I can appreciate Nissan getting out and going to school and going through his therapies because it, it's it can be overwhelming. So to have these weekend respites where these kids can actually go and have a great time, they're going to go fishing, archery, rock climbing. We have bonfire and they do an amazing talent show. But more importantly, these parents will have a whole weekend of some much needed de-stress time and a time for them to hang out, have their let their hair down or, you know, date nights or whatever they want to do. They can do it. So that's important. One thing that's very important is self-care for these parents or caregivers. They need that. And it's important as a mother who lives this every day. I know what I would want for my own self. And one of the things Nason's Place is committed to doing is making sure that we provide that for those, those parents and caregivers as well. And that's a beautiful thing that you are providing it. So we're coming to the end of our, this lovely interview and I've learned so much more about you as a founder, but mostly about Nason's Place and your purpose and your mission. So I want you to give the audience um, information to get in contact with you whether it's your website, if they like to participate in some of your services or like to, 
to donate to some of your services, how can they get in contact with you? Well, they can get in contact with us by um, visiting our website at www.nissansplace.org or calling us at 973-424-7781. And let me just say this, our goal is to get that state-of-the-art autism center built within the next two years. But we need help doing that because as you heard me mention earlier, we added another component, which is housing. So we're looking for someone to come in and help us develop that property to reach the, the goal of raising the money that we need to make this not only a state-of-the-art autism center that will be in this community for years and decades to come, but to also provide housing for our community. So please reach out to us, donate. No, no amount is too small or too large. And for me, Nason's Place can't stop the diagnosis, but we can help the families affected by it. I love it. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Again, Visit her website, Autism Awareness Month. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome.